Well, that's great to hear. I, I appreciate the fact that you said that you were burned out, so you jumped into a blockchain <laughs> startup. <laughs> Hi there, and welcome to the Parachain Auctions podcast hosted by Kraken. I'm Brian Hoffman, crypto platform product lead, and I'm glad you could join me out here on the cutting edge of crypto technologies. On this show, you'll hear from leaders and innovators around the world building parachains on Polkadot and Kusama. Tune in for insights from the best and brightest about their new projects. Whether this is the first you've heard of parachains or you're a DeFi, DGen aficionado, come with us behind the scenes as we explore the technology of the future today. Today, we have with us Matty Gagliardi, co-founder of HydraDX and a partner at Z Prime Capital, as well as Jacob Panic, who's a CTO and co-founder of HydraDX. Thanks for joining the show, Thanks guys. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. All right, guys. Well, welcome to the show. And, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Um, I'm glad that we could get both of you guys on the call. Um, Hydra is, uh, you know, one of the more interesting projects, I think, in the Polkadot and Kusama space that we've been following as a company. Um, and I was just wondering if maybe you guys could give us a little bit of a background on your history and how you got started, how you guys, you know, hooked up in, you know, in the, in the company and, you know, how, how did we get here? Today? So if I may, <laughs> I just, I just give a brief intro <laughs> into this. So, um, it actually all started within one hacker space in, uh, in, in Bratislava, Slovakia, where we all hang out. Um, so it's like, a it, it doesn't work anymore. Like it's, it's, it, it, it has been closed due to COVID, but, um, it was a place where, um, you know, a lot of like hackers and crypto people used to hang out. And, um, um, I was, I was one of them for, 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 for some period of time. And, and Jacob was, was, was another. And, um, so, um, I started, um, uh, with a bunch of partners, uh, Z prime capital in early 2019. And I came into Z prime with this like a sort of as a fan of Polkadot. So I was, I was, I was, I was a long-term supporter of Polkadot and I brought this into the team. And, um, as, as, as soon as we, as, as, you know, as we could sort of engage with Polkadot, not only as investors, but also as sort of builders and, and people with their own ideas about things. Um, we started to tinker with, with substrate and, um, I think it was summer, 2000, 2019, we, we had an idea, which is going to build like a, uh, XYK, um, um, AMM pool, if you will, on, um, on substrate, uh, but substrate wasn't where it is today. It was a bit, um, trickier to build things like that. So we started with like infrastructure things. So we put together a team of developers that, that, you know, did some things, uh, build a, um, uh, um, validator or was it a val validator monitor tool and, and, and things like that. Um, we even like applied for a grant just to, you know, just to get a hands on the technology. And we were pretty excited, you know, to see the substrate is, is really, a, a next generation blockchain builder, if you will. And, um, I think it was early 2020 when we were like, um, pretty, pretty clear about, you know, our vision on liquidity and, uh, how we can actually build better, um, exchanges or, or, or just liquidity protocols. This is how we refer to them. And we always had this idea of, 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 you know, app specific chains in mind. And, 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 and we were sure that, that this is, you know, the multi-chain world, um, uh, this is the beginning and, and we really want to participate in that. And, and as investors, um, so we're not a fund. So, so, so we can, um, so we have kind of, uh, freedom in doing what we want. So, so we have incubated our own idea. Um, so Z prime um, is, the is a VC firm? firm, but it's not, but it's not a, uh, sort yeah. of a fund, at, at least not right now. So we don't have any LPs. We're like inside capital. So we're free to do whatever you want. Right. Um, and we have, you know, most okay. of the time, very bad ideas that don't work, but this one <laughs> worked out pretty well. Um, <laughs> we were lucky to be surrounded with, um, uh, you know, my partner, not this Jacob, but the other Jacob who was constantly nagging about like, we need to build this, we need to build this liquidity protocol because the, the liquidity being too fragmented and, um, it, it won't work long-term. So, um, we're lucky to, um, you know, to, to be around this Jacob that's, that's, uh, that's here 
and and you know them being friends it was it was very very easy to kind of put together a bunch of really good developers um and um and and basically here we are so um that's a sort of maybe a longer intro but yeah <laughs> No, thanks. Uh, I, you know, it's funny how many projects actually start from hacker spaces, but it's pretty awesome, especially in this world, you can get away and work remote and work with people. Um, so Jacob, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got involved. Um, I'll try to shorten it. Yeah, sure. If you sure. want to. I, I'll try to, <laughs> I try to keep it short. So basically it was probably 2017 when I was like burned out from doing my previous job. I didn't know what to do. I, I was mining Ether back then. And I liked Ether. I loved the blockchain idea, but uh, I didn't love the uh, programming language there. And I was like very scared of uh, how it could be easily uh, bet. And it happened multiple times as we saw. And then I was hanging around this hacker space. I was helping there and uh, with stuff. And and then the other Jacob came to me and said, "Hey, hey, you were not doing like real work, just helping others <laughs> for a long time. Let's do this project." And I was like, "Yeah, sure. I I love like I loved Rust. Uh, it was like great language. I love the idea. So this is finally something that I can." Uh, trust uh, to build on and he came to me like let's try to do some some infrastructure tools and to get a hang of it we formed the team then we started to actually build the jack hoops idea which was the amm and then we like we got we sat together and looked at all of the other amms together and so that there is quite a few issues with them. It's also an advantage, but yeah, as we said, we said, like, hey, why don't we try to combine all of these together um, to build a large pool, unscattered liquidity, uh, to be more capital efficient, and uh, it worked out, and we're here right now. So uh, uh, other stuff, uh, Matty has told you, so. Uh, that was basically it. And yeah, then we hired uh, the best people I can imagine. I, I couldn't have better ones. And uh, and we're like growing still. The community is great. So I think we're onto something right here. Well, that's great to hear. I, I appreciate the fact that you said that you were burned out. So you jumped into a blockchain <laughs> store. <laughs> Seems kind of contradictory no, was, there, but <laughs> you I, know. Like, but uh, I wanted to do something hard, and I didn't have anything to do. Like it was, I, I was finding some something that will interest me and and will like spark interest in my mind because I was like bored of normal stuff. So this was perfect, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like those always spawn the best results is when you're really yeah. passionate about it and you really believe in it. Yeah, for sure. So um, so we kind of were talking a little bit about uh, this, you know, before the, the podcast is that, um, you know, Polkadot has this sister blockchain, Kusama, and it's like a pretty novel uh, dynamic of the networks, right? Like, not a, you know, none of the other blockchains really have this kind of sister, you know, pre, pre-blockchain. Um, and you guys have an interesting approach as well to how you want to roll out your software project onto these chains, right? So maybe you could give us just a little bit of an outline of like your roadmap, like where you, where you've come from so far in this mission and like, how did you get, you know, how do you plan to get to, uh, what will eventually become Hydra on the Polkadot chain? Yeah. So um, I don't know yeah, either just, one of you. So, want to so like from, from the get go, our, our ambition was to. Um, to you know, build a project that will become a Polkadot parachain. Um, that was like we were sure that this is what we're going for, and and it was a very sort of um, um, even though we were like we were not insiders, right? We we're pretty, pretty pretty much the outsiders of the Polkadot ecosystem. So we we're like we were not like famous founders or you know uh, personas from 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 um, from the ecosystem. We started really at the edge, sort of. Um, 
uh, but we still had that ambition. Um, and it, we weren't really sure how, you know, the Kusama Polka dot relationship will work like at, at the very beginning, because like it wasn't, it wasn't really clear, but, um, as, as we saw that Kusama is, is becoming its own thing. Like, it's not only like the site thing, but it's, it's its own thing, right? It's, I mean, mm. yeah, I mean, it's, not a test net, it's a test yeah. net, but it's not really a test net. It's a, it's a real value. Right. And uh, yeah. some people did not really uh, believe that Kusama can be valuable, but if you look at, you know, <laughs> I, I, I mean, not only price wise, but in terms of uh, the community and um, the projects that are there and not just because they can test their things, but because um, they can, they can play with real world value. Um, so, and Kusama has become, it's, it has its own people. It has its own kind of vision um, that I think it's complementary to, to Polkadot. And, and we were thinking um, the same thing. Like um, we, we saw, you know, Polkadot project sort of, you know, putting or, or trying to like, um, um, or what they're doing is basically they're, they're building a copy of their Polkadot ambition and putting it on, on, uh, on Kusama. But we were thinking this is probably a little bit of redundancy and we could actually, we could actually optimize a, a product for Kusama and also create a complementary product to Hydra DX. Um, so, um, the way we're not only framing this, but the way we're, uh, we're thinking about is is Hydra DX is a very sort of complex, efficient tool for very mature assets, and 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 uh, Basilisk is actually um, should serve long tail of assets. So it's a little bit more experimental in nature. So so it's new, fresh tokens come into play, like liquidity bootstrapping pools and etc. So so that is the kind of uh, the positioning of the two and the relationship between the two. So one is similar to Polkadot. A bit more kind of, um, I don't want to say professional because they're both professional, but the one is more for the for the mature assets, and the other one is yeah. for the for the experiments, but experimenting with the real world value, and that is, and that can be that can be huge. So, yeah, I think that that kind of uh, functionality is like hard to create with a test net. It's almost impossible with a test net only. You know, it's just no. it's just not the same. Um, yeah. So so. Just for context, I mean, Kraken is planning to support uh, the Kusama and, and hopefully the Polkadot uh, crowd loans uh, for for the for the auctions. Um, and and our and our customers are you know there's probably going to be quite a few of them that are coming to this and it's their first experience with um, some of these types of protocols. Like we we don't currently offer AMMs or any any of that kind of functionality within Kraken. Most people are buying and holding or trading and, and doing that. So. Maybe you could, I, I know that this is a, a pretty complex topic for somebody who's probably new to this space and hasn't really experienced DeFi in depth, but like, maybe you could give me like the elevator pitch, you know, for what, what exactly are you guys trying to build here? I, I do you hear a liquidity protocol? Someone else might be like, what is that? What are, what are you even trying to solve? I can take the Basilisk card probably for Basilisk. Um, what we are trying to do, um, or we are trying to bootstrap liquidity as we know that the liquidity is base layer for almost everything every transactions every transaction on the chain uh, interaction you need liquidity for that every project has its own value stored in tokens so we understand that uh, exchanges of this liquidity are very important because you need to transform the value into another value to be able to use it in other ways. So what we are trying to do is for the new projects that come in into Polkadot to bootstrap their liquidity, to start them, uh, to nurture them through Basilisk and, and to allow them to, for example, do the parachain slot bit or to have uh, their own liquidity in the protocol. Yeah, and that stems from our experience because uh, we have conducted an, a liquidity a liquidity bootstrapping pool on on Balancer, um, it's a project on Ethereum, um, which 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 has uh, this function. So um, 
and 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 as and as we were doing and preparing for the LBP, it's a very complex thing because you have to set a curve and um, you you can think about LBP as in like an ICO, but but like a you know like much more com- complicated thing <laughs> rather than just setting a price and 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 selling uh, the tokens. I mean, we were uh, you know our LBP, we we're not pocketing the funds that that we have raised. This is this goes to the protocol. So 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 we have not done a token sale. This will the the, the tokens that were that were distributed, um, um, you know, are um, sort of will be in possession of the of of, of people who participated um, and have put DAI into the pool. And the DAI is basically owned by the protocol itself. Um, so we have not you know conducted a a sell, uh, sale in any way, but we have distributed the ownership of the token. Um, and, um, as we were doing this, we were thinking like, this is, this is hard. We can do it better. Like this, this, you know, like there are so many things that you can do to make this experience better to sort of be able to launch a project in a decentralized way. Um, so, um, and we have translated this into Basilisk because we, we've been through it and, and we knew that this is not for this, this I mean, we could have built it as a, some kind of like add-on function, you know, to Hydra DX, but we, we thought that this is, this could be its own thing and it should be its own thing. Um, so, so just at, to break down the, the LBP concept a little bit further and, and just, you know, feel free to, to correct me where, where I may misstep, but the liquidity bootstrapping mechanism is, is a way for people to bring their liquidity, their coins into this, this, uh, protocol. And then they in turn get rewarded by the protocol with these other tokens. Exactly, and it works in a way to uh, prevent front running and uh, maximize distribution of the tokens at the same time. So, so how does it prevent the front running piece of that? Because that's that's definitely a hot topic these well, days. Well, um, it prevents actually it prevents the front loading uh, of the sale. So it, you have some like uh, duration of this of this sale or or. Uh, duration of the liquidity bootstrapping pool where you uh, gradually release small amounts of tokens and if somebody buys a large amount of tokens in the beginning the price will hike up but it will slowly start to drop down mm. so it doesn't make sense to buy much in the beginning it's like it's the best way to do this is to actually wait a little and then start slowly buying that means that if you are a large buyer, you should really like split your buys into into few chunks, and that means that other buyers will be able to come in. So we had like quite like very successful LBP because we had like five thousand five hundred participants. It was around this number, and we will we were like yeah blown blow away yeah with this. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, I'm I'm curious to see how the the parachain auctions, the slot auctions go because um, you know, people ape into these investments like so quickly they like just max out things right away, you know, creating something where there's an incentive to kind of spread that out and like make a more fair distribution is 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 really is really great. I, I know that there's a lot of problems around that. Um so, um, so one of the the big benefits that I think, or at least that I've kind of read into with um, what you guys are trying to do with Basilisk and, and Hydra DX is, um, is this idea that there's like this cross chain liquidity. Um, you know, one of the best things about Polkadot is, you know, there it, it kind of sets you up to have these parallel chains that you can kind of teleport funds between and like do different, you know, stuff. It encourages kind of interchain communication, so to speak. Like how, how important do you find that is to what you guys are trying to build? I mean, like what do you, do you find that as be like a really huge advantage of like building on top of substrate and, and in that ecosystem? I mean, you could definitely have cross channel liquidity even on Ether, uh, but building on Polkadot allows us to uh, utilize like uh, to, to change the protocol for the use case, not to, to, to change the use case for the protocol. So we can actually build it much in much more efficient way. Uh, we can like prioritize transactions that needs to be prioritized. For example, if we were to build some 
lending platform, we would prioritize liquidation transactions so that uh, some some even like maker doesn't happen. So uh, mm-hmm. this is the like the best thing that it all is. It's completely like you've got these base functionality like peer to peer networking and and, and uh, nodes and storage. And you can modify everything for for exactly the thing that you are doing, and we are actually doing that. So so that's the like biggest advantage of the of the substrate and popular, and also native interoperability. That's but that's I think it's the second thing to it. Yeah, and maybe also to 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 stress the fact that we don't you know we don't see. Yeah, you know, the multi-chain is not only Polkadot. Um, even though uh, Polkadot is, is sort of optimized for like a um, homogeneous chains, right? But um, we think in the future, everything should be connected and whether there will be bridges and there are already bridges being built, right? Between between uh, Ethereum side and, yeah. uh, and Polkadot and probably it will be, uh, I mean, we have Near and, um, and uh, uh, ETH bridge and, um, I think that in the future there will be many bridges. Um, they might be valuable, and we'll see. But we really, I really don't see it only. You know, Polkadot as an isolated world. We see it connected with you know other chains as well that are not currently in the ecosystem, are not substrate based. Yeah, I definitely see that's that's where we're going for sure. I mean, it it'll be interesting too to see how um, these kind of secondary networks start merging and interoperating. I mean, Binance Smart Chain and Solana and all these other platforms as well. Um, so did you ever think about uh, doing this on any of those other chains? I mean, other than ETH, uh, you know, like, did that ever come up in, in the in the process or, or were you guys like pretty dead, dead set on? Yeah, definitely. We looked at everything and like uh, at the time we started the at least for me, the community and, and everything around Polkadot looked like best of like, there wasn't anything close for me, at least as a developer. It was uh, like uh, like a dream come true. We were in the first Sub-Zero conference and everybody else in the room was really smart and really helpful. And it, like, uh, you want that when you are starting to build something really hard. Uh, I yeah. I I think that you know even though there are like other sort of good yeah. I mean technologies out there right um um I think Polkadot uh, like after those established ones like ETH um, Polkadot is the um is an ecosystem and a community that has been alive since 2017 early 2017 um there there are people you know that um, are not there you know just like uh, for the for the DeFi hype, they've been there for a while, so it's a very organic community, and and none of the other projects have that. Um, they you know they're projects that are you know getting tractions lately, and that's good. I mean, um, but Polkadot has history, so the community like I remember the first Web3 Summit, um, which I mean wasn't like Polkadot exclusive, but it was mostly Polkadot people around, uh, and um, and yeah, I I I was telling myself like like. This is going to be huge just because of the tech talent that I see uh, around me, and um, it really materialized. So this is this is really important distinction bet- between Polkadot, Kusama, and 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 other other uh, blockchains and other ecosystems that don't have that that big organic community for for a couple of years. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. I mean, I I remember, uh, you know, my my background is all the way back, you know, to just when Bitcoin was just generally the only thing around, and then going to the dev cons for Ethereum and and seeing the energy and and the excitement around that, and then now we're starting to see something similar forming around, you know, like Polkadot and that whole ecosystem, which obviously Gavin coming from Ethereum brought a lot of that energy. But um, yeah, it's incredible, and you know, it's it's weird starting and looking at it at a time in like 2017 where you're like this is so ambitious like are they going to ever get this out of the door and now we're knocking uh on the door of you know kusama launch you know which is imminent which i I don't know maybe maybe today (laughs) i don't know maybe later uh crowd loans may start we never know kind of all waiting to see but it's pretty exciting um so 
how long have you guys actually been like writing code and stuff for for uh, all of this? I, I know you've had like you got like quite a few like you have SnakeNet and some other you know testnet stuff that you've done and and now you're you're getting ready for uh, like I said, Kusama hasn't started the official parachain auction slots yet, uh, slot auctions yet, and so we haven't seen Basilisk yet. But you know, how long have you guys been writing uh, code? It's definitely more than two years i think uh that we started to work with polkadot then i think the first iteration of of xyk or mm pallet was february march think, february or even yeah, no no like it was that. even it was it was before 20 right uh, it was before 2020 yeah it was 19 yeah, it, uh, it was 19 and it was august or something like that so, so it was pretty yeah we we were, we're losing so the track of time yeah years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's easy to do. It's easy to do, especially through the pandemic, which is it rocked yeah, everybody's but I would say, quite a bit. Uh, like some um, form or shape of of Hydra, like the first code could could have been written like February, maybe March twenty twenty. With like other iteration before that, mm -hmm. right? Ah uh, yeah, so so yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, the only pool yeah, did that was something like that. Yeah. But then we started researching and stuff and, and uh, confirming that it works and doing economic audits and changing some parameters of it. And we're still doing it to be very sure that it works properly and, and that we model the incentives for everybody in the system so that like they are in line with what they are expecting. For example, that liquidity providers shouldn't get big losses or or they should get as much profits as possible and also like traders should get should get as low slippage as possible and you can you you are trying to balance these and we are doing research with block science actually um uh, and yeah that's uh that's quite a lot of uh like a big part of all of this uh yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, so, so let's say that you guys win a slot, um, you go live, people have received their tokens, they're ready to use, you know, Basilisk. What, what can, you know, what can our clients expect to like be able to do with these coins, you know, on day one? Like, what, what are they going to be using these for? Uh, how can they get involved with these these liquidity uh, liquidity pools? So first, there will be our own Basilisk LBP on our chain that is aimed to bootstrap initial liqui liquidity in the Basilisk. So what we are trying to do is we'll do uh, LBP that also distributes more tokens, but more importantly, we want to get as much liquidity in the pool, in the initial pools as possible to be able to, to have like, uh, proper means of exchange of, of value. So, so uh, for example, it means that we will get some stable coin there, we will get some uh, Kusama there, we'll create these pools and people will be, will be able to exchange them for each other and, and use them for different use cases. That will be the first thing. Yeah. And yeah. And sorry. Uh, we're yeah, I just want to say that in a way, uh, Basilisk potentially offers, uh, you know, other Kusama projects an alternative route to become a pirate chain because if they will accept a, a Kusama token in their LBP, um, they will be able to to fund at least partially um, their own pirate chain slot. So uh, um, maybe we would try to even encourage founders to seek Kusama liquidity via LBP and. Um, liquidity is very important for, for, for every token and for every ecosystem. So the more liquidity, the better, the more sort of fluidity within the system, the, the greater the value. I, yeah, I, <laughs> this is like one of those things where like, um, I, I was talking to one of the other projects about this and this weird nested technology where you can like do, you know, like, okay, let's say a project does want to like, you know, get liquidity through your LBP. You know, it's like they're raising money on top of a product that's raised yes. money on top of a product that's raised money. It's like this like inception kind of thing going on. But it, but it's just the the possibilities are endless. Um, 
so uh so are people able to like do this through some specific uh portal do, is it like a web app like how, how do they yeah. interact with this um are yeah they gonna... it will be yeah. a custom custom web application we actually we were quite hating the user experience that currently resides on ether because like of the big fees and and uh, failed transactions <laughs> and sometimes yeah. your wallet is not working so uh, we are trying actually to conduct some UX research also, and we'll try to like improve on this. So the, like we will try to focus and make this as painless as possible for users. Uh, maybe not in the the first first iterations, but we'll we'll get there. That's like one of the things that we understand is very important. Uh, so yeah, we are planning to aim our application that you will be able to swap uh, swap these tokens and also conduct an LBP yourself. Um, and there will be also second use case following quite soon. I'm sure you saw Matthias t-shirt. We wanted to we we wanted to launch some NFTs. Uh, I don't know if I can say that, but yeah, probably it's time. Oh, you already uh, said it, so. <laughs> 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 we cannot yeah, edit this podcast. It's on chain. It's it's yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we wanted to launch some NFTs and to be able to redeem them uh, like for real items. Like uh, we'll have uh, we'll have shorts. <laughs> uh, they will be very cool. Well, judging by the price of Unisocks, that sounds like a good investment yeah, to me. And, <laughs> and we want, yeah, we wanted to do it on Ether and do it like in Socks, but we were thinking, yeah, this is really not promoting the ecosystem. Let's try to do it mm -hmm. on our chains or somewhere in Polkadot. So we gathered, we we actually uh search for help with this we found other projects it's called codadot and they'll be helping us with with uh, launching uh launching these nfts on our chain yeah funny thing it's they called... also come from the hackerspace <laughs> yeah, we started exactly. it, so <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> this hackerspace <laughs> we brought so there, there. <laughs> there will also be yeah. soon after the launch uh some nft stuff going on well, it certainly seems timely. Uh, the NFT boom is is cooling off a little bit, but it's still crazy. It's crazy out there what people are doing. So, um, so I, I just want to ask you. So, if everything goes as planned uh, and everything is successful for you guys, like where where are we at this time next year? What, what do you expect to happen over the next year uh, that that can excite the people that are looking at your project? Okay. Um... I think generally we should be looking at cross-chain DeFi, um, and and I believe that that could be bigger than the current DeFi that that um, we we are looking at right now. That it's primarily resides on on Ethereum, um, and um, and we hope that uh, a year from now, um, Hydro DX, both Hydro DX and Basilisk will um, will be part of this um, sort of uh, explosion of of new to, new sort of um, liquidity um cross chain liquidity and uh, all the opportunity that arises between you know different chains and arbitraging and arbitrages and and um uh, yeah i we just think that there will be tremendous value unlocked when uh, when 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 we enter this um cross chain or multi chain uh, defi paradigm i think that's a pretty uh pretty ambitious goal and i think you're probably right <laughs> To be honest, so and maybe we'll be sitting uh, on the beach next summer in your uh, in the shorts. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, um, <laughs> and that's a story to 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 the shorts. So it's not like we just came up with the shorts. It's, yeah, it's actually smart boy shorts, and uh, there's a as a story, but it's probably for another day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then, if you, if and when you come back on, you you'll have to tell us the story. Well, I have one final question for you guys that I've been asking everybody. And uh, it's so so um, Kusama's official slogan or unofficial slogan is uh, expect chaos. So we're asking everybody to give us what they think 
the overall chaos score is for Kusama so far, zero to 10. Give us a number. How chaotic do you think this has been and is going to be? You can each go. What do you think? Zero to 10. How chaotic? Uh, if we count how hard this build such thing, uh, then three. But if we don't count that in, then I think it will be like seven or eight. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think Matt? yeah 20 hopefully 20 <laughs> off the charts okay but it's that's a good a, chaos a good right one. i mean there's a chaos and there's a chaos right so hopefully yeah. it will be the, the good one um uh that's yeah. that's certainly shaping up to be yeah. uh the better chaos yeah well it's definitely been an interesting uh journey for sure um, well, where can where can our listeners go to find out more about what you guys are doing, read up on it, and uh, participate in any of this stuff you got going on? So there's a Twitter handle, um, and there's a yeah. there's a there's a actual website. Um, um, okay, you um, got to tell so me. What can they we are. just like link them? But they're simple. So it's Hydra. <laughs> What's the so, handle? Yeah, so yeah. No, we could put them. We could put them in, Hydra, put them in the notes. But dx.io. Uh, um, and for Basilisk is bsx.fi. Yeah. Um, so um, those are the websites where all the informations, um, where you can find all the info. Um, we have uh, you know newsletter for for both, where we you know, sort of releasing on a regular basis all the information, all the community updates, etc. We do have a Discord that's very active, um, and um, yeah, we have um, uh, we have a Telegram group, but um, uh, Discord is like you can go really much more in depth if you wanna. Uh, have like a more nuanced conversation then then our discord is also uh, a good place to to go to to learn more awesome well that's really great uh it sounds like there's a lot of places to get involved and a lot of opportunities so uh thank you so much for for coming on the show today guys uh it's really exciting and i, I look forward to seeing how the project progresses over the next few months and uh good luck on the uh, thank slot you auction. thank, thank you looks- enjoyed it have a great one <laughs> Thanks again to our guests, Maddie and Jacob. It was great learning more about Hydra DX, which will be landing on Polkadot, as well as Basilisk, which is their sister project on Kusama. Make sure you like, subscribe, and review us on your favorite podcast platform, and we'll be sure to bring you along as we get a backstage pass to the world of parachain auctions. Remember, you can always learn more about all things crypto by going to kraken.com learn. And until next time, I'm Brian Hoffman, and this has been the Parachain Auctions Podcast. This content is not financial or investment advice. All interviews and discussions are opinions only. Kraken does not endorse the accuracy of this content. None of the following information should be construed as a recommendation to support any specific parachain project or to participate in parachain auctions in general. See our terms of service for more information.